Hey, what's up guys, Zoll here, and today I kind of wanted to do a more casual Q&A style video where I'm going to go through and I've got a bunch of your comments on here and I'm just going to do a response to a lot of these comments, kind of keep up that conversation with you guys. I think it will be a fun video to do and with that let's get right into it. The first comment is from Fakrul Nawawi96, and I apologize for any of these names that I mispronounce. I just got a job last week as an analytical chemist in a pharmaceutical company. Chemistry is so fascinating to learn. Congrats, that's awesome news. I am applying to jobs currently as well, and it's good to see other people getting into the industry. Next, we have Zen Mode. I have dyscalculia, or at least I think I do. I've reached my last year of high school without learning the Pythagoras theorem and basic equations. I also have ADHD. Is it even possible to get into chemistry? I love it and want to work in a lab, but how? I don't know physics at all. On the top of that, I'm not even sure I'll be able to finish high school. Well, this is a bit of a tough one because, uh, as a lot of you know, chemistry does involve a lot of math, and I would say math can be really hard to learn, and a lot of the times it's bad teachers and bad ways of learning math. So, um, and I don't know if you have like an official diagnosis yet on this, but if you're truly passionate about chemistry, um, a lot of people push through um, kind of their issues with math, and they can go into a chemistry field that doesn't have a lot of math. like. The whole field of organic chemistry has a minimal amount of math, and so if you are truly passionate about chemistry, I do think you can push through a lot to get there. Sweet Tilly says, hey, if I want to become a chemist, should I just do it? Also, I love your videos. They are awesome and give you great info. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like my videos, and to answer your question, yes, you should. If you love chemistry, you should do it, and it's super fulfilling and super rewarding. Hey, what you think is a better as a salary range, medicinal or organic chemistry? Well, to answer that, I will say medicinal and like pharmaceuticals does usually have some of the best salaries in the industry, but with that, organic chemistry and organic synthesis kind of are in line with that. A lot of organic chemists end up going into pharmaceuticals, so if you are going into that pharmaceutical route, it is one of the best paying chemistry fields. Um, I'm not really sure how to answer medicinal versus organic chemistry because organic chemistry is such a broad subject and you can go into things such as pharmaceuticals and medicinal stuff or polymers, which are going to pay a bit less. Dark Mage says, I don't know what to choose between organic, inorganic, and biochemistry. All of them sound the most interesting for me, along with their subfields like polymer chemistry, agricultural chemistry, nanochemistry, and materials chemistry, etc. It's probably because I'm still, I haven't really taken chemistry yet because I sort of wasted a year in elementary algebra. They didn't let me take any other courses. Yeah, basically to answer this question is, base, um, like when you're in the chemistry major, if you do, you know you want to go into chemistry, which it does seem like you do, you're going to have to take all these organic and inorganic and biochem classes. So you don't really need to choose right now. You can take these classes and choose later on as you take these classes what interests you because if you're going into grad school or the industry and all, um, you're not going to have to pick that while you're still in college. And so be sure to take all these classes that interest you because some of them might not live up to what you think they are and some of them you might be really passionate about. So try and kind of immerse yourself in those fields and I think that's your best bet for knowing what to pick. Noah King says, you should talk about the pay differences in these fields. Are there differences? If so, who pays what? Yes, there are a lot of differences between the chemistry subfields. Like I mentioned earlier, if you go into organic chemistry and the pharmaceutical route, you will get tend to get paid a premium. Analytical chemistry is also a pretty well-paid field. A lot of people need to know what's in their products and even like you can be an analytical chemist in a lot of different fields. And so those two get to um, get a bit more of the pay. I would say 
inorganic chemistry and physical chemistry, depending on what you go into, might get paid a little less. And of course, there is a big gap between academia and industry. If you go into academia, you're going to get paid a lot less than if you go into industry or even government. So I'd say a lot of the money right now from my research is in pharmaceuticals and even like stuff like battery chem and material science are super popular right now as well and those you can get paid a decent amount with. Would an asso uh, Anonymous Andy says, would an associate's degree get me a job that pays enough to afford my bachelor's? So with an associate's degree uh, with the chemistry major, a lot of the times you're going to be working as a pretty low level lab tech and it's going to be pretty hard to move past that promotionally or otherwise because of that education. That being said, you will be saving a lot of money if you're going to the community college and getting that associate's degree, so you're only paying for two years of that chem bachelor's in the end. In my opinion, your best bet would probably be to try and get as many scholarships as you can and graduate with that bachelor's degree um, all in one. Uh, I think you're going to be missing out on a lot of opportunity cost of that income if you go into an associate's try and work to save up for the bachelor's and then go into the bachelor's when you could have gone into the bachelor's initially and used all that time to be making a lot more money. Um, and there's just a lot more upward mobility with bachelor's immediately, either going into grad school or getting higher paid jobs. So try as hard as you can to get those good grades and apply for a lot of scholarships and grants to help pay for that bachelor's. And of course, you don't need to go to a private school. Private schools are astronomically more expensive, so if you're trying to save money, public schools are usually just fine. Another thing you can do is you can do the first two years of your chemistry degree at that community college and go immediately into the bachelor's. You don't have to kind of get that job and save up to go into that bachelor's. What is your, Nicholas Hughes says, what's your opinion on analytical chemistry? Thank God I don't have to take PCHEM. Analytical chemistry as a class isn't that bad. It's honestly really interesting for me. You go through a lot of the instrumentation. I think it's fascinating and one of the most important parts of chemistry because it is the way you know what you've actually made in lab. And it can be a lot of fun. Sometimes there are data sets and all and techniques that are super, super boring. But once you get past that, it can be a lot of fun. And yes, thank God you don't have to take PCHEM. A lot of PCHEM was very interesting. That being said, PCHEM is an extremely difficult class. Uh, Mahmoudul Hassan says, Sir, chemistry or food science degree, which one is a better major? Now, that depends what you want to go into. A lot of chemists actually go into the food science fields, but if you know for sure you want to go into food science, food science as a degree might suit you better. That being said, it's going to be a lot less flexible because with a chemistry degree, you can go into a lot of different fields as well as food science. Uh, Samin Fatima says, some tips to become a successful chemist when you're studying in not much good institute. Um, so yeah, a lot of people start out their undergrad in lower levels or public institutions that aren't exactly in like the elite colleges. The key here is get as good grades as you can and really prove yourself to be at the top of your chemistry graduating class. So if you need to go into grad school to become that successful chemist, you can get into a good grad school past that and try as much as you can to get into some sort of research. There's usually a lot less research within professors and all at these uh, lower level universities but you can even do self-designed research, etc. Just anything to put yourself into a lab and do research, whether it be uh, your own research or working under a professor and getting as good grades as possible, just to prove that you can succeed at a higher level institution if you are going into that pathway. Now, if you are going into industry, usually it's just getting that first job and you know where you got your degree isn't super important once you build up work experience. 
And so there are plenty of ways to do that. Princess Fayima says, congratulations. I wanted to ask what do you think would be good starting freshman schedule and what tips do you have for studying each subject? Yeah, as a freshman chemistry major, a lot of it is prerequisites. Of course, you're going to be taking general chemistry. If you can fit it in, you're going to need your calculus and your physics as well. I wouldn't recommend taking all three of those at the same time because that will be a very packed year. You won't need your calculus and physics until your junior year, and so you can split those up between your sophomore and freshman years. And for studying each subject, general chemistry is just know your equations and when to use them. A lot of it's basic algebra, and you can almost brute force study through it. Once you get to organic chemistry, it's all about practice problems, building your chemical intuition. A lot of it is just having seen stuff so many times, you can sort of uh, intuit what reactions are going to do. And once you get to PCHEM, just be sure to be super brushed up on your math. It is a math physics course with a chemistry skin on it, so just be sure you've got your calculus down before you take PCHEM. It's Me says, Piranha had been super helpful for me, especially for cleaning in the RBF. Usually I soak it in either NaOH or perchloric acid, and it don't come out. I just tend to the good old piranha. Yes, I love piranha solution. Um, for those of you that don't know, I extensively had to use piranha solution for cleaning silicon wafers in my undergraduate research lab, and it is an extremely dangerous chemical. It will eat through organic matter in seconds. It can boil over, and if you mix it with organic solvents, it will explode. So very fun, very dangerous. That being said, nothing gets anything clean like getting it piranha clean. Cybermat says, rate my professor failed me, so now I am here because humor is a better coping mechanism than alcohol. Yeah, rate my professor can be super hit or miss. The thing I find with some people take that professor in certain classes that they teach better, and also one big thing is with Rate My Professor, uh, you need a big sample size of reviews, and even then, with chemistry classes, people either are good at that class or they really struggle, and so they'll put in a professor rating based off that and not the actual quality of the professor. And so you can get some nightmare professors when you thought they'd be good, and you can get really good professors when Rate My Professor says they'd be bad, so I wouldn't rely on it too much. If you can, talk to other people in your major who've taken that professor, and they can usually give you a better rundown on how that professor teaches than rate my professor. Gift24GT says, what are the easiest organic chemistry textbooks to learn from? A lot of them are worse than a bad horror movie. That is very true. My favorite organic chemistry textbook of the ones I've seen is Organic Chemistry as a Second Language by Klein. These are great little textbooks. Actually, I have them right here, so bear with me. These two smaller textbooks are wonderful. They only go over what you need to know, and there's not a lot of fluff information. There are reaction mechanisms all through, and tons of practice problems. These were instrumental for me doing well in organic chemistry, and it made OCHEM a breeze, and I absolutely loved it, because just running through practice problems in these uh, really boosts your knowledge of OCHEM. With that, I wanted to thank you guys. Leave more comments down below if you have more questions. If you guys like this type of video, I can do a ton more in the future. It is really fun reading through your guys' comments and being able to interact with you. And with that, I will see you next time.